Unveiling the Splendors of the Achaemenid Empire Introduction In the annals of ancient history, few civilizations have left as indelible a mark as the Achaemenid Empire of Persia. Also known as the First Persian Empire. Nestled in the heart of the Middle East. Based in Western Asia, it was the largest empire the world had ever seen at its time, spanning a total of 5.5 million square kilometers, 2.1 million square miles, from the Balkans and Egypt in the west to Central Asia and the Indus Valley in the east. Around the 7th century BC, the region of Persis in the southwestern portion of the Iranian plateau was settled by the Persians, 20, from Persis, Cyrus rose and defeated the Median Empire as well as Lydia and the Neo-Babylonian Empire, marking the formal establishment of a new imperial polity under the Achaemenid dynasty. The Achaemenid Empire, often referred to as Persia, stands as a testament to the grandeur of ancient civilizations. Spanning three centuries from 550 BCE to 330 BCE, this remarkable empire played a pivotal role in shaping the course of history. Its towering achievements in governance, architecture, and culture have left an indelible mark on the world. In this article, we delve into the captivating world of the Achaemenid Empire and explore the facets that make it a timeless wonder. Achaemenid Lineage Achaemenes, Old Persian, Haximanes, Ancient Greek, Chialpha Iotamunueta Achaemenes, Latin, Achaemenes, was the apical ancestor of the Achaemenid dynasty of rulers of Persia. Other than his role as an apical ancestor, nothing is known of his life or actions. It is quite possible that Achaemenes was only the mythical ancestor of the Persian royal house, but if Achaemenes was a historical person, he would have lived around the end of the 8th century and the beginning of the 7th century BC. The name used in European languages, Greek, Chialpha Iotamunueta, Achaemenes, Latin, Achaemenes, ultimately derives from Old Persian Haximanes, as found together with Elamite, Haikakamanuiz or Hakamanuiz, and Akkadian, Aemanaiiz, in the non-contemporaneous trilingual Behistun inscription of Darius I. The Old Persian proper name is traditionally derived from Haxa, friend, and Mana, thinking power, yielding, having a friend's mind. A more recent interpretation reads Haxa, as, follower, giving, characterized by a follower's spirit, the name is spelled, Haximanes, in modern Persian. Dynasty. The Persian Empire was a hereditary monarchy, though the spirit of eldest son succession was often violated through palace intrigues. The Rise of the Achaemenid Empire. The Achaemenid Empire owes its genesis to Cyrus the Great, a visionary leader whose ambition knew no bounds. In 550 BCE, Cyrus, hailing from the heartland of Persis, modern-day Fars province in Iran, embarked on a mission to unify the Persian tribes. His military prowess and diplomacy culminated in the defeat of the Median Empire in 550 BCE, marking the birth of the Achaemenid dynasty. Under his leadership, Persia expanded its dominion, stretching from the Aegean Sea to the Indus River, encompassing numerous diverse cultures and peoples. Cyrus' legacy of tolerance and respect for local traditions laid the foundation for the empire's enduring success. Darius the Great, architect of a vast empire. Cyrus's legacy was perpetuated by his successors, especially Darius the Great. Under his rule, the Achaemenid Empire reached its zenith, expanding its dominion from the Balkans in the west to the Indus Valley in the east. Darius' administration was characterized by a meticulous system of governance, with the empire divided into satrapies, each governed by a satrap. The Royal Road, an ancient highway, facilitated swift communication and trade across the empire. Architectural Marvels A hallmark of the Achaemenid Empire was its architectural opulence. The imperial capital of Persepolis, with its monumental palaces and intricate stone reliefs, stands as a testament to the empire's grandeur. The majestic Apadana Palace, adorned with colossal columns and elaborate friezes, hosted lavish ceremonies and served as a symbol of Persian power. These architectural marvels combined Persian, Assyrian, and Egyptian influences, showcasing the empire's cosmopolitan nature. Persepolis, the glittering jewel. One of the most iconic symbols of the Achaemenid Empire's architectural prowess is Persepolis, the opulent palace complex built by Darius the Great. Located in modern-day Iran, 
Persepolis is a UNESCO World Heritage Site and a testament to the Empire's sophistication and artistic achievements. Its grand staircases, intricately carved reliefs, and massive stone columns reflect the Empire's wealth and cultural richness. Royal Road and Communication Network To facilitate efficient governance and trade, the Achaemenids constructed an extensive network of roads, most notably the Royal Road. Stretching over 2,700 kilometers, 1,677 miles, from Susa to Sardis, this impressive thoroughfare connected disparate regions of the empire, enabling swift communication and trade. It became a lifeline for merchants, diplomats, and travelers, fostering cultural exchange and economic prosperity. One of the most remarkable artifacts from the Achaemenid Empire is the Cyrus Cylinder, an ancient clay cylinder inscribed with the policies of Cyrus the Great. Cyrus Cylinder and Human Rights Tolerance and Diversity One remarkable aspect of the Achaemenid Empire was its commitment to religious tolerance. Cyrus the Great, known for his famous cylinder, issued a decree that allowed conquered peoples to retain their religious practices and cultural traditions. This policy of inclusivity endeared the empire to its subjects and fostered a sense of unity among its diverse populace and the return of displaced populations. This groundbreaking document continues to inspire discussions on tolerance and inclusivity. The Persian Legacy The Achaemenid Empire left a lasting impact on subsequent civilizations. Alexander the Great's conquest of Persia in 330 BCE ushered in the Hellenistic era, where Greek and Persian cultures merged, giving rise to a rich cultural tapestry. This fusion extended to art, language, and even culinary traditions. The Achaemenids nurtured a rich artistic and cultural milieu, blending their Persian heritage with influences from conquered lands this eclectic fusion is evident in their exquisite metalwork, intricate jewelry, and vibrant textiles. Persian artistry also flourished in the realm of literature, as exemplified by the renowned Persian poet, Ferdowsi, whose epic masterpiece, the Shahnameh, celebrates the mythical and historical legacy of Persia. Military Despite its humble origins in Persis, the empire reached an enormous size under the leadership of Cyrus the Great. Cyrus created a multi-state empire where he allowed regional rulers, satraps, to rule as his proxy over a certain designated area of his empire called a satrapy. The basic rule of governance was based upon loyalty and obedience of each satrapy to the central power, or the king, and compliance with tax laws. Due to the ethnocultural diversity of the subject nations under the rule of Persia, its enormous geographic size, and the constant struggle for power by regional competitors, the creation of a professional army was necessary for both maintenance of the peace and to enforce the authority of the king in cases of rebellion and foreign threat. Cyrus managed to create a strong land army, using it to advance in his campaigns in Babylonia, Lydia, and Asia Minor. Military Composition Infantry The Achaemenid infantry consisted of three groups, the Immortals, the Sparabara, and the Takabara, though in the later years of the Achaemenid Empire, a fourth group, the Cardaces, were introduced. The immortals were described by Herodotus as being heavy infantry, led by Hydarns too, that were kept constantly at a strength of exactly 10,000 men. He claimed that the unit's name stemmed from the custom that every killed, seriously wounded, or sick member was immediately replaced with a new one, maintaining the numbers and cohesion of the unit. They had wicker shields, short spears, swords or large daggers, and bow and arrows. Underneath their robes they wore scale armor coats. The spear counterbalances of the common soldiery were of silver, to differentiate commanding ranks, the officers' spear butt spikes were golden. Surviving Achaemenid colored glazed bricks and carved reliefs represent the immortals as wearing elaborate robes, hoop earrings and gold jewelry, though these garments and accessories were most likely worn only for ceremonial occasions. Cavalry The armored Persian horsemen and their death-dealing chariots were invincible. No man dared face them. Herodotus The Persian cavalry was crucial for conquering nations and maintained its importance in the Achaemenid army to the last days of the Achaemenid Empire. The cavalry was separated into four groups. The chariot archers, horse cavalry, the camel cavalry, 
and the war elephant's Achaemenid cavalrymen in the satrapy of Hellespontine Phrygia, Alticulac sarcophagus, early 4th century BC. In the later years of the Achaemenid Empire, the chariot archer had become merely a ceremonial part of the Persian army, yet in the early years of the empire, their use was widespread. The chariot archers were armed with spears, bows, arrows, swords, and scale armor. The horses were also suited with scale armor similar to scale armor of the Sasanian cataphracts. The chariots would contain imperial symbols and decorations. Armored Cavalry, Achaemenid dynast of Hellespontine Phrygia attacking a Greek siloi, Alticulac sarcophagus, early 4th century BC, the horses used by the Achaemenids for cavalry were often suited with scale armor, like most cavalry units. The riders often had the same armor as infantry units, wicker shields, short spears, swords or large daggers, bow and arrow, and scale armor coats. The camel cavalry was different, because the camels and sometimes the riders, were provided little protection against enemies. Navy Since its foundation by Cyrus, the Persian Empire had been primarily a land empire with a strong army but void of any actual naval forces. By the 5th century BC, this was to change, as the empire came across Greek and Egyptian forces, each with their own maritime traditions and capabilities. Darius I was the first Achaemenid king to invest in a Persian fleet. Even by then no true, imperial navy had existed either in Greece or Egypt. Persia would become the first empire, under Darius, to inaugurate and deploy the first regular imperial navy. Despite this achievement, the personnel for the imperial navy would not come from Iran, but were often Phoenicians, mostly from Sidon, Egyptians and Greeks chosen by Darius the Great to operate the empire's combat vessels. Reconstitution of Persian landing ships at the Battle of Marathon At first the ships were built in Sidon by the Phoenicians, the first Achaemenid ships measured about 40 meters in length and 6 meters in width, able to transport up to 300 Persian troops at any one trip. Soon, other states of the empire were constructing their own ships, each incorporating slight local preferences. The ships eventually found their way to the Persian Gulf and Persian naval forces laid the foundation for a strong Persian maritime presence there. Persians also had ships often of a capacity 100 to 200 troops patrolling the empire's various rivers including the Curran, Tigris and Nile in the west, as well as the Indus. Greek ships against Achaemenid ships at the Battle of Salamis. The Achaemenid navy established bases located along the Curran, and in Bahrain, Oman, and Yemen. The Persian fleet was not only used for peacekeeping purposes along the Karun but also opened the door to trade with India via the Persian Gulf. Legacy and Enduring Influence Although the Achaemenid Empire eventually succumbed to the conquests of Alexander the Great, its legacy endured. Persian administrative systems, such as satrapies, provinces, and a standardized currency, laid the groundwork for future empires. Persian art and architecture influenced subsequent civilizations, notably the Hellenistic and Islamic worlds. Even today, the enduring spirit of Persia can be felt in Iran's rich cultural heritage. The Persian language, which served as the lingua franca of the Achaemenid Empire, continues to influence modern languages. Persian literature, with the epic poem Shahnameh at its pinnacle, remains a source of inspiration for poets and writers worldwide. Moreover, the empire's architectural marvels still draw travelers and scholars to Iran. Tombs Tomb of Artaxerxes III in Persepolis Many Achaemenid rulers built tombs for themselves. The most famous, Nakshi Rustam, is an ancient necropolis located about 12 kilometers northwest of Persepolis, with the tombs of four of the kings of the dynasty are carved in this mountain, Darius I, Xerxes I, Artaxerxes I and Darius II. Other kings constructed their own tombs elsewhere. Artaxerxes II and Artaxerxes III preferred to carve their tombs beside their spring capital Persepolis, the left tomb belonging to Artaxerxes II and the right tomb belonging to Artaxerxes III, the last Achaemenid king to have a tomb. The tomb of the founder of the Achaemenid dynasty, Cyrus the Great, was built in Pasargadi, now a World Heritage Site. Descendants in later Persian dynasties. Frateraka, governors of the Seleucid Empire. 
Frataraka dynasty ruler Vadfordad I, Atafordates I. 3rd century BC. Istakar, Persepolis, Mint. Main article, Frataraka. Several later Persian rulers, forming the Frataraka dynasty, are known to have acted as representatives of the Seleucids in the region of Fars. They ruled from the end of the 3rd century BC to the beginning of the 2nd century BC, and Vabars or Vadfordad I obtained independence c. 150 BC, when Seleucid power waned in the areas of southwestern Persia and the Persian Gulf region. Kings of Persis, under the Parthian Empire. Main article, Kings of Persis. Daravai, Darios I, used for the first time the title of MLK, King. 2nd century BC. During an apparent transitional period, corresponding to the reigns of Vadfordad II and another uncertain king, no titles of authority appeared on the reverse of their coins. The earlier title PRTRK Zy al Haya, Frataraka, had disappeared. Under Daravai, Dario's I, however, the new title of MLK, or king, appeared, sometimes with the mention of PRS, Persis, suggesting that the kings of Persis had become independent rulers. When the Parthian Arzacid king Mithridates I, c. 171-138 BC, took control of Persis, he left the Persian dynasts in office, known as the kings of Persis, and they were allowed to continue minting coins with the title of MLK, king. Sasanian Empire Main article, Sasanian Empire With the reign of Sabur, the son of Papag, the kingdom of Persis then became a part of the Sasanian Empire. Sabur's brother and successor, Ardaxer, Artaxerxes, v, defeated the last legitimate Parthian king, Artabanos v in 224 AD, and was crowned at Tesiphon as Ardaxer I, Ardashir I, Sahansa I Aaron, becoming the first king of the new Sasanian Empire. Conclusion the Achaemenid Empire of Persia stands as a testament to the heights that human civilization can reach. Its grandeur, cultural exchange, and legacy of tolerance continue to inspire awe and fascination. From the majestic palaces of Persepolis to the ideals enshrined in the Cyrus Cylinder, the Achaemenid Empire remains an enduring symbol of Persian ingenuity and the pursuit of greatness. As we explore the remnants of this extraordinary empire, we are reminded of the timeless allure of Persia and the indomitable spirit of its people.